So, um, Um, so what I'm going to start in now is, this is a beginning, a first example on the fatigue design of a simple beam uh, which has some end connection and this part is, uh, um, I restart the PC because it couldn't find the So let's see. Um, so we have two different systems, and these two systems are at the first point quite equal, but we have here two different loadings. So the loading at system one is uh, just some normal force, and in system two um, we have a bending force. And um, so what we or what I want to, to go with you through is um, how to calculate the stress ranges um, at the first part and afterwards go deeper and analyze some different welded parts. Um, so how we gonna define the structure detail, uh, which assumptions we have to do and also we have to be careful. So um, until the IT is fixed, you can make your drawings. Just follow on. So um, I would say let's go for for the stress investigation. So in system one, uh, of course, um, we have here our bar. Um, I used here an HEB one hundred. Uh, this HEB 100, I make here a small drawing, has a width of 696 millimeters and a height of 100 millimeters. And due to this, we get a cross section of 21.2 uh, times 2 centimeters in square. Um, is it large enough or should it be? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so this is the area of the cross section. And now we want, uh, we also apply here a force. Um, as you can see here, we have here the time signal and we have here our kilonewton in, in the height. And so we have an upper force of 400 kilonewtons and a lower force of 200 kilonewtons. If you now calculate the sigma O, then we have of O to A is the 400 
kilonewtons over 21.2 centimeter in square. And therefore, we get around 190 MPa. The lower stress is the 200 kilonewtons over the 21.2 centimeters square. So this results in 94.9 MPa. So also here, around 95 MPa. So, and we can calculate our delta sigma is sigma O times sigma U. And this, of course, here is 95 MPa. And the R value is plus 0.4. go for our bending system. So at first we calculate our bending moment. The bending moment here is the 4.0 kilonewtons times 5 meters, 20 kilonewton meters, the MUYU is 4.0 kilonewtons, um, sorry, 2.0 kilonewtons times 5 meters is 10 kilonewton meters. And we can calculate the upper stresses by M0 over. Y epsilon times H off. So this is 20 kilonewton meters times 100 centimeters over meter times 5.0 centimeters, so half the height. And the Y epsilon um, I have to add here is. Three hundred forty nine centimeters over four. So, and we get here the two H four The same for a sigma u.
So, as I mentioned before, uh, we just use uh, the informations of the cross section in our Bernoulli beam. And um, the same for the stress range investigation. So, delta sigma is sigma O minus sigma U is here. MPA and the R again 0.5. So, um, why did they use here um, the 0.5? Um, this is, of course, it's more, our, I would say, uh, example for teaching um, because the 0.5, this is. Um, related to the definition of the notch clauses in EC3. So in EC3, in the Eurocode, we say, okay, our notch details are always related to R of 0.5. And for example, if you would have some, um, yeah, some, some other R value, uh, then we would have, um, have some appendix. Um, I also can take my documentary and um, I use the other PC. Oh, perfect. <laughs> So, um, so and, um, for example, if we would have something which would be lower of 0.5, So what I wrote here, if the R value, so the stress rate U is beyond or lower than 0.5, the mean value, which is related to the R ratio, can be included in the stress in the, in the fatigue investigation. So um, here, they can be uh, because you get an improvement. So uh, it is, if you have some, some better conditions later, in your fatigue assessment, of course you're gonna you want to do it, but it also somehow you have to find uh, yeah a solution or an estimation why it should be larger than 0.5, and in the 0.5 there is included, for example, some eigenstresses which are related um, to the welding procedure, to the uh, to the establishing of the structure. So, um, yeah, so usually at first you're gonna calculate with the 0.5 if you see there are maybe some effects which are lead to a, a smaller R value and uh, you really can estimate and calculate it, then you can improve your fatigue, uh, fatigue estimation. So, Um, what I prepared um, to, to, yeah, to go a little bit mm, faster in, in the progress is some Excel sheet. Um, so the Excel sheet itself um, just has the, the main basic informations and I tried to, to give you some steps we go through in the fatigue investigation. So, for example, um, this is always the first uh, idea, okay, the loading situation. So, I already prepared here um, for the later step of the equivalent stress, uh, stress state, um, some different stress states. So, for example, um, if you now go 
um, for the loading of system one, we would have here 95 MPA. And I would assume here a amount of cycles of 1 over 10 over 6. So this is just um, what I add here. So I said, OK, um, form, a, form an investigation. And it's 10 over 6. Uh, and I'm fine with this. If um, afterwards um, your structure may be uh, destroyed or rebuilt or something else, so actually we say, OK, 10 over 6 is fine. So then um, what does it mean in our case? So the 10 over the, the 95 MPA. Uh, this is our stress range, so this means, sorry, this means we have here the mean value of, um, of um, we have a stress range of 95, so the value goes from here to here, but the mean value is at this level regarding to a stress ratio of 0.5. So this is uh, the mean value here is around 140 and um, no 142.5 and we have an upper stress of 190 and the lower stress of 95. So this looks like the stress situation and now uh, we have to go and look in our detail. So what what do we want to to do here is I just delete some parts which are not any more important. So of course, um, the whole beam here has um, a stress range of light of our 95 MPA. So we have here, over the whole section, delta sigma of 95 MPA and an R value of 0.5. So we, we know, we, due to our codes, we know that, for example, the cross section itself, as I showed before, has a delta sigma C of 160 MPA. So this is for the cross section. For the eye shape. So the cross section itself is, in this case, it's not really important. But for example, if you go to the connection itself, so the connection has here some different notch classes. The notch classes are, in this case, as we had before, are related to the L value. And the L value at this part is defined by the thickness of the blade and also added of the, the, yeah, uh, the belt seam itself. So for example, if we add here a huge blade, which could be, I would say, larger than five millimeters um, or even larger than eight millimeters, um, we have at this part several well seams and due to this also the size of the connection uh, increases. So also that's why we have here the definition of the L just to get an information on how big, are, how big is the size, uh, what could be some effects due to eigenstresses, due to several well seams but also uh, due to the constructive design of this part. 
So the next one, uh, which is also here included in this uh, drawing is that, for example, our crack will get stored at the weld, root, uh, weld toe. So we say, okay, at this part, we have a completely welded connection. So there is no root failure and we have a good weld uh, preparation at the beginning. And this is everything which is included in this part. So for example, if, would, if we would have here uh, a root failure, our delta C, C would be 36 MPa. So compared to what we have here, um, for example, for the highest, um, for the highest um, resistance curve, we have here the 80. Uh, if we just would have here the root failure, it would be completely decreased to 36 MPa, which at the end could handle our detail. So this is uh, why, for example, um, if you go there, and if you design some, some fatigue loaded um, structures, um, you also have uh, to think, okay, um, how at the end is your connection be built? Uh, what is the, the effort you can handle? And, but also is it uh, realistic that um, this part is really loaded like this? So for example, if you have a connection which is, um, which is not low carrying, um, then maybe you can also t handle the 36 MPa. If it's uh, for your structure uh, part, which is uh, important to, to handle the, the whole stability or something else, um, you have to go and be sure, okay, are there uh, some high stress ranges or there is something else? And uh, is there some part where you can even have some lower uh, load resistances or fatigue resistances, or um, do you have to have the, the ATMPA? So in this case, um, we have here the HEB100. And the HEB100, um, the um, thickness of our plates are, are rough, roughly said always smaller than 10 millimeters. So due to the drawing, we could have here a blade at the end, at this part to add here, which could be up to 35 millimeters. Due to this that we know, okay, TF and TV are always smaller than five millimeters. So um, then we have here the weld seam um, all also included, and the weld seam is just on one part. So due to this uh, estimations of the thickness of our end plate, the thickness of our uh, HEB, and the weld seam itself, we can say at the end that we see here to have the delta sigma C of 80 MPa. Um, due to the curve we, all, we, we get in our code. So this is what I also applied here. So our detail is the detail for 80. That's why we have here a delta sigma C of 80 MPa. The slope for steel structures in the high cycle fatigue uh, area is always three. And um, so um, the delta C, C is related to an amount of cycles from two times 10 over six. So we have all information now. We can draw our SN curve. So, and the end, SN curve at the end looks like this. So we have, in this case, I did um, all three of um, our approaches. So this would be the the minor original, the elementary, and uh, the modified. And as I said before, usually we're going to uh, use 
for fatigue design, the modified curve. Uh, if we just have a sinus loading, as we have here, we also, we, we also use this one because uh, this is what our results in the testing show at the end. And um, how can we draw our curve? So our curve, so um, how is it related? Um, so we have here our delta sigma c. That's one time the, uh, delta sigma c to delta sigma e. So the delta sigma e is, for example, the value here. And this is related to n e to n c times 1 over m. So oh, I, I have the formula here, just modified. Um, so this is how we draw um, our curve. Um, or how we can calculate from inf our information of the delta sigma c to nc and the slope k. And so we can calculate to a specific value of uh, amounts of cycle we want to handle. And therefore, we get the stresses our resistance curve can handle at this point. So, and so how would be the, the linear damage accumulation? So as you can see here, uh, before I said, okay, my structure gonna handle one, uh, 10 times over six, so one million of cycles. And I have therefore a um, delta sigma stress range of 95 MPa. So due to the formula um, and the definition of the slope here, um, I can calculate the resistance part. So this is uh, at the end 100, uh, 1 million times 195, 34, 3. So we have a delta sigma C of 80. So we are higher, um, so we are above our notch detail with our stress range. So due to this, of course, we have to have a resistance, amount of resistance cycles, which are lower than um, our defined value. So if you go here again, you see, okay, this is our amount of cycles and the stress range we want to handle. This is our resistance curve. And so still, uh, this looks like if the lines already intersect. But uh, as you can see here, uh, the damage accumulation says, okay, um, the, damage am the amount of damage is here around 0.83. So we still could handle at this part here the 194 times 343 uh, cycles. And then theoretically, um, our structure will fail. So um, in this curve, which is uh, defined in the Eurocode, or also in the ASHTO or uh, recommendations of the IAW. Um, there is always um, some procedure behind where you say, okay, you conduct some testing, you get your results, and at the end, you also uh, define um, a curve which has some uh, safety risk already included. And the safety risk here is a one-sided uh, log normal um, approximation uh, of 95 percentage of, uh, how do you say, um, or 5% of, of, of failing. So 95% gonna not fail. And so you have here the testing results have to be on this side. And at the end, this is the curve which is defined in the Eurocode or something else. And this is something we're going to do on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. So um, just to, to know about the background, so this is how usually 
you say, um, to define everything, and at the end, this is the, the value here going to take. So as you can see, 0.3 is already good. And um, now, again, the same procedure, the same amount of values, um, but just um, for the second system. So we had before the system one with the 95 MPA, and also the second two system has um, 143.2. MPA and the same amount of cycles. So as you can see here, um, somehow our, of course, our system changed a little bit. We have here higher upper stresses, um, but still uh, we are inside, for example, of an S355. So this would be still be handled inside the structure. So the value part itself, it didn't change. So um, we just changed the loading situation. And uh, as you see here, um, our curve due to, the, due to the higher amount of stress ranges, um, but on the same amount of cycles, we're going to shift uh, to the top. And so at this point, we intersect our resistance curve. And due to this, we also have here a damage factor of 2.86. So of course, our structure will fail at the end. So um, this is um, how usually uh, in the nominal stress design or nominal stress concept, um, the, the fatigue approach is done. And for example, if, uh, if we now go for a multi-stage loading, um, we also do here the linear approximate, uh, the linear damage um, assumptions. But later, um, we also recalculate a stress range which show uh, the same amount of damage just for one uh, number of cycles um, to have a much more easy uh, calculations. And this is something um, which is related to the equivalent stress design. And um, the equivalent stress design, therefore, um, you always have some different factors. And um, these factors, um, I just explain on over there. So, So, um, as you see in, in the top, um, I applied here a load histogram. So, this is what you can see here. And the load histogram is something which we usually use um, to define loads in grain structures, bridges, and something else. So always a situation where you have a combined loading of high loads, small loads, and so on. So for example, um, just to give you a small idea, so you have here some nice bridges. And at first, you have a small car driving above. Then you have a, a truck. Uh, 
and so on. And sometimes the drug is half loaded or fully loaded or something else. Here you have five persons, four persons, uh, some luggage, something else. And so the, the load always is something which is quite variable. So, and this information usually uh, is collected after some more um, yeah, effort you're going to take here uh, in the load histogram. So the load histogram is always uh, defined by two axes. So you have here an n value and a delta sigma value, uh, which could be also, uh, if you say here, this is R0.5, so you could also say, OK, this delta sigma is related to an upper stress range, to a lower stress range, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, and typically, um, you have here some different load uh, values, and the load values itself are always equi, uh, have the same distance, so they have their equidistance. So for example, if you would say our equidistance here of delta sigma, I use here now a tilde, is around um, 30 MPa. So we can say, OK, the highest value we, we measured or we see in our structure would be like um, 360 MPa. Then we have here 330 MPa, 300 MPa, 270 MPa, and 240 MPa. So, and now, um, this is the information we also go through our uh, stress time curve. So, and with this information at the end, we say, OK, this is a time series of three months, for example, or one year, two years. Uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter. And we investigate that we have here, for example, uh, 10 over 5, 2 times 10 over 5. So 10 over 5, 2 times 10 over 5, 3 times 10 over 5, 4 times 10 over 5, and 5 times 5 times 10 over 5. So if you now add this information in our Excel sheet, um, So, and as you can see here, at the end, we get an, a straight line. So this would be a linear uh, load collective. So for example, um, to describe a load collective, um, there are different parameters. And uh, these different parameters at the end say, OK, how is the shape of this load collective? And for example, this is a a quite easy one, and for example, in case of, uh, of bridge structures or also grain structures, depending on the usage, so on the exposition of the grain or on the, on, or on, on the exposition of the bridge or on the, the usage of the grain, so if it's a an, an grain which is used in heavy industries, a grain which is used in a small um, worker space, um, at the end, 
the shape of the collective changes. And so this is always some information uh, at the end which are uh, behind some equivalent stress evaluation. And so the easiest task here, um, as I would say, is here the linear one. Uh, for example, if you have a rectangular shape of your collective, it would be at the end uh, just a sinusoidal loading. So this is something which you uh, can see also here that um, you can find um, the whole space from a sinusoidal loading in the description of the collective um, due to uh, some different shapes which are looking like this or looking like this or just a straight line. So um, this is some work you have to do if you want to work uh, with some information like this and at the end which is um, something char characteristic due to the loading and due to the amount of cycles which are inside the structure. So if you now go to our system, so we still say, okay, we are working here uh, with the connection of system one. So we say, okay, um, so this is how it looks like. Um, yeah, this is, um, this is a row drawing. It should be just go here. Um, and so we still have our detail, all the same, but at this part, um, of course, um, we have here a damage factor, which is quite unrealistic of 33, um, but how is this damage factor calculated? So, for example, um, our damage factor, um, we defined before our delta sigma c of um, two times 10 over six with 80 MPa. We have our slope and the slope goes in this direction. And so again, we recalculate here this point of this value. This value is the large MY. And as you can see here, uh, we have here applied uh, a value of 10 over five. Um, our structure here can just handle 2.4 times 10 over four. Um, so we already have a damage factor of 4.5. Um, so each stress range results to a damage factor uh, and at the end, as you see here, the damage is just um, multiplied and this is, um, as we say, the linear damage hypothesis of Palmgren minor. And um, so here, this is the value. So what we could do um, just to to get a better approach is we say, okay, um, we now not, do not investigate our specific detail. We just go here and go for the beam structure. So at the end, um, oh, have to change here. Um, So at the end, okay, as you see here, um, none of the line intersect with our SN curve, but uh, due to the summation of uh, the different values, at the end, uh, we have a damage factor which is still above 0, 0.0, and so still our structure gonna fail at the end. So what we're gonna do in the next step is um, to define a load equivalent stress range. So in this part, I just used the curve one. So the curve one is the one line which has just one slope um, to have no yeah, difficulties with different slopes and endurance limit because it's much more easier to investigate the formulas. And um, the first assumption would be, okay, how much cycles could be handled, uh, a rough estimation, uh, which would be not really uh, sensible, would be, okay, our structure has a amount of such cycles, uh, our detail is related to 
2 times 10 over 6, so multiply the damage with the factor of the cycles which are not included, and at the end we had already above a damage factor of 4, so of course the damage would be much more increasing, so this is no assumption which would be uh, at the end satisfy our design. So what we're going to do is that we know um, of our prior calculations that we have the linear damage and the linear damage is here related to n1 over big n1 to n2 over big n2 and so on. So, due to our detail, we can now say the n1 is related to a delta sigma c over delta sigma 1 times m times nz. And this could be done for each value. So at the same time, we can say, OK, we are looking for a detail which has, is somehow defined onto the damage we are already calculating. And this detail has somehow be related to what we want to do. And so we have here, just to be sure, we have here already our formula. And so from each detail, we can recalculate to each point. One over m. So, and now uh, with this information, we just can uh, say, okay, this at some point this formula has to be equal, and out of this two, we can define that the delta sigma e is one over n tot times delta sigma e summation of 1 times m. So this is just using the two formulas and uh, rewrote to, um, to a value delta sigma e. I already, it is also on the, on the slides. So. So this is the formula at the end we get here. So the delta sigma e is 1 times n total, or this, the same amount of cycles we, we want to have. And here, the summation of the stress strains over m times n e. And this in the brackets over 1 times m. And um, if we now use here this summation, uh, summation we can say, OK, what is the, the amount of cycles our detail or our collective should be related to. So this is something I would say it's uh, at this point um, just an, an easy engineering approach to say, okay, I have, for example, in this case, this collective, and I would say I want to have a stress range which, is, which has the same damage. And I don't care about the numbers of cycles. And this, so I say, OK, the numbers of cycles should be 2 times 10 over 6. And so I can work with the, each detail. So uh, for example, if you say, OK, um, our equivalent stress range should be related to the same amount of cycles um, which we have here in our collective, 
then our e uh, delta sigma e would be 258 MPa. Now, uh, as you can see here uh, in the second stage, I just say, okay, um, I don't want to have the same amount of cycles. I just want to have a relation to our notch detail, which are already defined to 2 times 10 over 6. And um, so I recalculate the delta sigma e, and I see, okay, I have here a 258.9 MPa of stress range, which I can go into the design. And at the end, if you go again, you say, okay, I defined uh, the same detail as before. And as you see here, um, with the de uh, different equivalent stresses, um, at the end, you get the same amount of, psych um, of damage. And this is um, just an easy way to, to use the, yeah, the linear um, damage approach to define, for example, for um, a really um, yeah, typical amount of load collectives and stress range would which would have the same amount of cycles. And so, um, for example, um, here, as you can see, the information at the end would be the same, that you say, okay, um, to, to be able to handle um, the load collective, you would have to have a detail which has a delta sigma C of 260 MPa. So this is quite unrealistic. So due to this, um, you have to, to get another um, uh, estimation in your design. And uh, at first, uh, if you cannot handle the, if you cannot change the delta sigma c to a realistic value um, for two times ten over six, at the end you have to to go and get another dimension and to increase the thickness of your structure to at this to, to have at the same uh, amount of uh, floating a lower stress range. And for example, if you now say, okay, you just um, yeah, multiply uh, the, the thickness times two. Um, so I just increase the thickness or uh, so I increase the thickness. So at the end, I have here instead of the 360, um, the half of 360 is uh, 190, oh, 980, sorry. Um, here it's 165.5, 150, 185.5, and here we have 120, no. So this would be if you just increase uh, the cross section two times, um, you lower the stress range uh, at the same amount um, here. Before we had uh, around 4.2. Um, in the damage factor. Now, as you can see here, due to the uh, definition of the resistance curve in the double logarithmic space, at the end you have here uh, just a uh, damage factor of 0.5. So at the end it's a factor of 8, which is here included. And um, also, um, as you can see here, for the detail, um, at the end, you can say, okay, we have here um, the equivalent stress state. And so now you can say, okay, for a collective like this and um, the detail, which is related to the 200, uh, 2 times 10 over 6 cycles, you could use a detail which have a delta sigma C of 130. And then your definition would be uh, your damage would be 0.1. So if you now go here, say 130, of course what happens, we lower our resistance curve and at the end, um, 
our damage is here, the 0 0.99. And this is the value which we here recalculated for the two times 10 over six as equivalent stress state. So, and what is, uh, what you also have to be, or what would have to be done in this case is that, um, for example, um, this recalculation is always um, yeah, compared or related to the shape of our low collective and also due to the forces which are applied at our structures. So for example, um, at the end, uh, which is uh, inside the concept of the load, uh, load equivalent stress range is, uh, as we call it, the lambda concept. And the lambda concept at the end is just a value which is scaling our load or our loading. And so there is, um, for example, the lambda one, this is something which is related to a traffic. This is uh, related to the span size. Then the third one is uh, related, for example, for bridges. If you have, um, how to say, more than one or two or three lines, so the, the amount of lines. And so you have to recalculate here the lambda factor and at the end also scale um, your, your lambda which you have calculated here. So at the end you have for this here a delta sigma star which is lambda times delta sigma. just to, to give uh, from, a, from a theoretical um, start from the modeling uh, the way to a, to a real assumption which can be related to a different size of a bridge or to a different traffic amount or something else. Okay. Um, yeah. So this was for today, the, the first introduction in the practical, in the theoretical state, as we say. Um, tomorrow, I will go forward to the, to the mean value, so the information which is related to our R, and um, also some modeling assumptions and what is related to this modeling and the stress investigation in for fatigue design. Okay, thanks a lot for being here and hopefully it could give you some information to fatigue design. <laughs>